Containerization was an incredible step forward for modern software development, and Docker deserves a lot of the credit. Pre-Docker, to deploy an app, we had to set up an environment with all of the dependencies our app needed. This was okay for one app, but when multiple apps shared the same environment, things got complicated fast. The result was Snowflake servers, which were super hard to replicate. Docker solves this problem by packaging all those system dependencies into a container right alongside your app, so they're nice and isolated. So as long as you get the environment right when you build the container's image, you'll not need to worry about it ever again. All right, let's get going. So we're going to Dockerize a Spring Boot application. Just so happens we've already built one of those. So I have one here, which is the books tutorial that we've done. So I'll leave a link to this in the description below. And this is uh, basically a very, very basic REST API. So if we just remind ourselves what this looks like, and then we'll jump into Dockerizing this. So if we take a look at source main Java, best just take a look at the controller. We have several uh, endpoints on this one. So we can see here, we've got a put mapping. So this is used to create and update books. So forward slash books ISBN. Uh, we have a git mapping here, which specifies the ISBN. So this is a retrieve, get the book details, essentially for this particular book as specified by our ISBN, which is the unique identifier of a book. We've got a git mapping without the ISBN in the URL here. And this is list all books. Give me all of the books that you currently have. In a typical scenario, this would be um, where you pass in things like query parameters in order to do searches, and you would have pagination in here as well. This was obviously a very basic REST API, so this doesn't have that in there, but list books. And then we have our delete mapping, which no surprise deletes a book. And we can see here, we specify the ISBN of the book in the URL, and that tells us, or that tells the server which book to delete. So here's our rundown of our basic REST API. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to build this REST API. So what that means is we're going to, using Maven, build the jar file that we can then execute to run the API. This currently has nothing to do with Docker. We just need that executable jar file because that will be the file that we bake into our Docker image. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in, go over here and we're going to using the Maven wrapper, which just as a reminder is in uh, here, we can see we've got a Maven wrapper uh, and there's the Windows one and then all of the guts of that wrapper is inside that directory there. However, it just means that we don't need a um, uh, instance of Maven installed. We can just use Maven. So we're going to use that Maven wrapper and we're going to say Maven clean, just clean what we've got. Don't really need that, but we're just going to clean anything um, if we've got left over from the tutorial. And we're going to say install. And what install is going to do is, so Maven works on the concept of uh, goals. So it's going to run one after another, after another, after another. And if we specify install, which is near the end, it's, it's going to compile for us. It's going to run our tests, which we can see here. The tests have been run and it's going to create us a jar file, which we can see here. And then it's listing out the directory that the jar file is in. That's great. That's step one. Now, just to uh, prove that everything is working okay, what we're going to do is run that. So we do that with uh, zoom in down here. We're going to do that with Java dash jar, and then we're going to give it the path to the jar file, which is in target. And then it was books. There we go. And we're going to run that now. Okay. So that looks like it is running absolutely fine. So to prove that we're going to go over to Postman. So we can see here, we've got the, the Git call, which is just going to call localhost 8080 and uh, give us the list of all of the books that you have in there. So if we call this one with send, we can see that we've got ourselves a HTTP 200 status and then nothing has been returned, but because we haven't created any books. So we can create a book very quickly. We can see we're going to call the put endpoint here. Uh, there's an ISBN, made up one. We scroll down here. We can see there's the, the body that we're going to send to it. So an ISBN in the body, title in the body, and the author as well. So if we click send, we can see that we've got ourselves a HTTP 201 created. And if we go over here, it just gives us a response body with um, essentially what we've sent to it. But just to prove that's created something, let's go over to the list endpoint once more, click on send. Uh, that's going to give us a 201, oh, oh, sorry, 200 OK. And we should see there's the book that we've just created. So there is a REST API, very, very basic executable jar file. Now for the Docker stuff. So what we're going to do first and foremost is create ourselves a Docker file. So if we go back over to Visual Code Studio, go over here. And just in the root of the uh, project, we're going to create a new file and it's going to be called Docker file, capital D. 
And let's open that up. In fact, let's close the terminal, zoom in. There we go. So this is where we're going to put all the information that Docker is going to use to build us a Docker image. Remember that a Docker container is created from a Docker image. So first things first is we're going to have to tell it from which base image to, to build this Docker container from. We're going to have to use a Java base image because we have a Java application. We need to have Java present in order to run a Java application makes sense right so we're going to use this one here so let's break this down it says from this particular image which i'm specifying here we want to build our docker image for our application and we can see here we're using open jdk and we're going to use version 17 of uh, open jdk and we're going to use the alpine edition now alpine is an operating system which is very very slim line so there's only the basic stuff that we actually need in alpine and as a result it tends to be a lot smaller a docker image than if you use a full-blown ubuntu uh, base image for example so obviously the smaller the image is the faster it is to upload and the faster it is to iterate and less disk space that it uses so obviously smaller is better but there may be an instance where there is something missing in alpine that you actually need in which case you need to go to a full-blown version like an ubuntu based image or a debian based image for example so we're going to use the alpine edition because we're not doing anything too special now let's uh, fill in some of the extra details here and we'll go through those very quickly if you found this useful be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on new content just like this so let's go through these quickly. We can see here we've got a few lines. Some are technically optional, but they're recommended. Let me talk you through them. So the first one here is using run. So this is going to run the following command in the same way that we would run it on a command line, but it's going to run it inside of the Docker image as it builds. And we're going to create a group using add group, and we're adding a user to that group also called app. So we have a group called app and a user called app, which belongs in group app, right? Long story short, essentially we're creating a brand new user to run the application as. And this is best practice because if we don't do this, the application will run as the root user. Now, the reason we don't want to run as the root user is the root user can do everything in our system, right? And if we have some sort of security vulnerability in our application, we basically leave ourselves open to far more risk by using the root user than if we used a new user with more restrictive permissions. So we're creating a brand new user, calling it app, sticking it inside of the Linux group app, and we're going to use that and we specify to use this user app using this uh, this next line specify user using the keyword user and we're specifying app so basically when we run our application do it using the user app that we've just created rather than the root user which is default and we can see we've got a copy keyword here no prizes to guess what this does we're basically copying the jar file that we ran earlier so that executable jar into the docker image as it builds and this will be the jar file that we then run using the next command which we can see is the entry point so when the docker container runs so remember the docker container is a running instance of that image so when we run a docker container from this image we're essentially calling java jar and then the path to the jar file in a very similar way that we did on the command line earlier when we just didn't do anything with docker docker is essentially going to do that but inside of a docker container to demonstrate this we're going to need to create a docker image from this docker file in order to do that let's create a new terminal here in fact while i remember let's close the running application earlier we don't want that to confuse us brand new fresh terminal and we're going to run the following which is docker build and then the path to the docker file we just so happen to be in the same directory as a docker file so we're going to do, use dots to say current directory and now we pass in a little bit more information and that is dash t and in dash t we're essentially going to give a name to the docker image that we build and the convention is like so we do a namespace which is going to be dev tero and then we give it a application name or, a, or, a, or an image name a docker image name and this one is the books application that we built in spring boot so i'm just going to call this one books and now we can give it a tag and i'm going to give it the tag latest so just the latest build of dev tero books and then we just execute this so we can see here that it's pulling down the uh, jdk 17 alpine version you see it downloading it's finished downloading so it's now going to build using the instructions in the doc file it's copied across the jar file and we are built how do we prove this is built that's pretty straightforward we can go docker image ls and this will list out all of the built docker images that we have 
and we can see here we have the DevTero books latest. There's the image ID, which is just a hash which identifies this. Created 18 seconds ago, and it's just under 400 megabytes. Perfect. So we have a Docker image. How do we get a running Docker container from this image? That's also pretty straightforward. So what we're going to do is we're going to say Docker run. And now we have an option. We can either run this in daemon mode in the background. So we hit the run and then it just goes into the background and then we have to interact with it via, via Docker. Or we can run it in interactive mode, in which case it stays in the foreground and we get to see everything it prints out. And then when we cancel it, it closes the application. It, it, it kills that Docker container. So we're going to run it in interactive mode. So we pass in dash IT. And now we want to give it a little bit of configuration. So we want to specify which port we want it to uh, to expose, right? So our application we know runs on port 8080. That's what we were hitting it in Postman, right? So we want to tell Docker our application runs on port 8080. We want port 8080 made available to the host machine so we can hit it via Postman the same way that we were doing before. If we didn't do this, then we wouldn't be able to hit it on port 8080. So the way that we do that is go dash P, and we're going to say uh, map port 8080 to port 8080, P for port. And now we need to specify the name of our uh, our image. So that's uh, DevTero books. And we're just going to say tag latest. And if we execute this, it's going to run the container for us. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we can see the application starting up exactly the same way that it did earlier when we were just running the jar file on the command line. And we can see it started up on port 8080 and all seems well. Let's test that this is running correctly. And we're gonna do that by going back to Postman. And we can see that we're on the uh, URL, which just lists out all of the books. So if we hit this, we should see HTTP status 200 there, but also we have a list of empty books. Fantastic. So let's create ourselves a book in the same way we did before. And we can see here that we've got the, uh, the put endpoint, just creating wind in the willows as a book. Let's go over, click send, scroll down. We've got HTTP 201 created. Everything seems good. And we've got our response. Let's go back to the tab where we were listing all of the books, which I'm pretty sure was this one here. And let's send that again. Perfect. So we can see we've got HTTP 200 just like before. Also, we've got the response of that book. So our application is running perfectly and it's running inside of that Docker container. To doubly prove this, what we're going to do is go back to our terminal. Let's cancel out of this, which essentially kills the Docker container. And then if we were to go back to Postman, and if we were to click on send once more, so essentially give me that list of books again, we can see here that I could not send the request because the connection was refused on port 8080. Do you know why? Because our application stopped running. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, it running in daemon mode. So you have a bit of comparison and we can do that by just pressing up on our keyboard to get the last command that was run. And then instead of IT, we're just going to pass in D for daemon mode. Away it goes and we've got ourselves a uh, an ID. If we go back to Postman just to prove that it's running again, we can click on send. We should get HTTP 200, which we've got there. And of course, it's empty because uh, Docker containers are ephemeral. So any of the books that we created last time when we killed off that Docker container, they went away with it. Everything seems running fine. But how would you kill something running in daemon mode? Well, uh, go back to our terminal here. We can go Docker PS in a similar way that you would do PS on uh, in Linux. And we can see here we've got a... Uh, let's just move me out of the way. We can see here we've got the uh, container ID. It's, it's telling us the image that's running, uh, the command that was used to start it when we created it how long it's been up for, and then it's telling us about the ports that are exposed as well. Pretty great. So how would we stop an application like this running? How would we kill the container? Well, first we need to take the container ID, which we've got here, and then we would say docker kill, passing in the container ID, executing that. And if we were to do docker ps once more, we can see that no docker containers are running. We can doubly prove that by going back over to Postman. And when we click on send here, we can see we've got that same could not send request. So that's how we would build a uh, Docker image and then run it as a Docker container. But it's not the only way of doing this, especially when you have a build system as powerful as Maven. There is actually a uh, plugin for this. So we go back to our application here. So if we were to open up our POM file, we can see here the information that we've got. So the group ID, artifact ID, uh, we can see that the name of the application uh, in the POM file configuration is called books. 
However, if we scroll all the way down to the plugins, we see we have the Spring Boot Maven plugin. So that's how we are able to run Spring Boot, or sorry, run the Spring Boot application via Maven. We can add an additional plugin here. So let's do that. So this plugin created by Spotify essentially allows us to create a Docker image via Maven using the Docker file in that same directory. So essentially what we were doing manually on the command line to interact with Docker, but this automates it to a certain degree. And truth be told, if you wanna dive into the configuration on, in this plugin, it's very, very powerful. We are literally just scratching the service in this tutorial today. So how would we use something like this? Well, we would, uh, first and foremost, let's do a Docker image LS. And we can see here that the latest image was created eight minutes ago. Now we're going to create a brand new image using, using Maven. And the way that we're going to do that is calling our Maven wrapper. And we're going to say Docker file colon build. So it's a brand new goal inside of Maven. So we can see here it's building our image. Wonderful. So we've got a build success after eight seconds. So let's see if our uh, image has been built. Docker image LS. And lo and behold, we've got an image built 10 seconds ago via Maven. There's a tag latest. Everything is good. And we can run this in exactly the same way that we did before. Now, before we wrap this up, there's one last thing that I want to show you because it's really, really important to Spring Boot in particular. So Spring Boot's configuration, you can pass that in in a properties file. Uh, so if we were to take a look over here in resources and we go to application.properties, we can put all manner of properties in this properties file. However, did you know that you can also pass them in as environment variables? Any key that you would put in this application.properties actually has a direct translation to an environment variable name. And, and Spring Boot would look for that environment variable name if it didn't find the key in the application.properties. So if we were to, for example, put in here server.port and we were to pass in 8181, it would run our Spring Boot application on port 8181. Now, what if we wanted to do this via an environment variable? What would that look like? And why is that important? Because we can do it when we run our docking container. We don't have to rebuild our Docker image. We can just pass in new configuration when we run our Docker container. Let me show you how. So if we go back down to our terminal here, make sure nothing's running. And we're going to do that by running Docker PS. Nope, everything seems fine. So let's just press up a couple of times to get back to the command that we had before. There we go. There's our interactive one. Uh, let's move me out of the way, shall we? And we can pass in some extra configuration like this. Dash E to specify an environment variable. I'm now going to pass in server underscore port. See the translation from the key in application.properties where it was lowercase with a dot separator. This is uppercase with an underscore separator, which is the convention of environment variables. And we're going to pass in 8181. Now, I'm also going to need to change the ports that are exposed here. So 8181.8181. And when we run this, we should see that Spring Boot is going to pick up the fact that an environment variable exists, which is server underscore port. And it's going to change the port that it's running on from 8080 to 8181. Just to doubly confirm that we have nothing in our application properties file, it is completely empty. So let's run this. We can see it's starting up. And once it gets to the end, it's actually going to tell us which port that it started up on. And if we scroll over, we can see that it started up on port 8181 instead of port 8080. Let's just doubly prove that by going over to Postman. Okay, so we can see here, we've got port 8080. Let's just go all the way over here and let's click on send. Oh, would you look at that? Could not send the request. So how do we deal with that? Well, of course we change it to the correct port, which is port 8181. So we go 8181, click on send once more. And we can see here, we've got a HTTP status of 200. And of course we have an empty list returned, which is completely valid because we haven't created any books yet. So we've essentially managed to specify configuration on the command line for the Docker container to use without having to rebuild the Docker container. But there we go, scratching the surface on what we can do with a Spring Boot application inside of Docker. But here are the basics. And there we go. That's the basics on how to dockerize a Spring Boot REST API. Now, if you want to see how that REST API was written in the first place, be sure to check out this tutorial where we go from nothing to having a full-blown REST API written in Spring Boot and Java.
I'll see you over there.